In this problem, we are going to compare the quantum and the classical harmonic oscillator. So for the harmonic oscillator, you can imagine there being an x-axis, and this is the point where x is equal to 0. And then we have a potential that is equal to 1 half m omega square x squared. So in the case of classical mechanics, you can expect the particle to be bouncing around on this line over here, and then the particle can never escape these two limits over here. So this could be a, and this is negative a. So a is just a constant. And then you can expect to always find that your particle somewhere around here. So you can imagine a particle being stuck to a spring and then it's going to bounce back and forth, but it's never going to exceed this limit over here. But then in quantum mechanics, you can find the particle every, uh, anywhere on the x-axis, as is uh, illustrated by the solution to the Schrodinger equation. So now we're going to have to find the probability that in the case of the quantum harmonic oscillator, that we will find the particle in the regions over here, in these two regions here, where in the classical mechanics you would expect there to be zero probability of ever finding the particle, because the particle is always going to be stuck within these, uh, within this region for classical mechanics. So in this example, we're going to be dealing with the ground state. So for the ground state, the total energy is equal to one half h bar omega. So if your system has a total energy of this much, in the case of classical mechanics, we can find what A is going to be equal to. So in the case of classical mechanics, you can imagine the particle bouncing around over here. And in the middle, it's going to have the most kinetic energy. And then you can imagine there being a spring. And then it's going to slow the particle down until it reaches a point where all the kinetic energy is converted into the potential energy inside the spring. And then at this point, this is going to be this upper bound, this limit over here. And that is going to help us uh, deduce what A should be in the case of classical mechanics. So all we have to do is just to equate the total amount of energy to the potential formula. So this is the case when all the energy is converted into potential energy. So there is no more kinetic energy. So in such a case, uh, the x is going to be equal to A squared. So when this relationship is true, this corresponds to the case where the particle has been stretched right to the very point uh, where it reaches the limit where it can't go further. So this would be the point where x is equal to a. So I can just substitute x equal to a into this potential formula. So the total amount of energy is equal to potential energy, and the kinetic energy is equal to zero. So using this, I can de deduce what a should be. So you can see that I can just uh, take away some of these constants. And then in the end, I get h bar divided by m omega square root. So this is what a is going to be equal to for a total amount of energy of 1 half h bar omega. So this a is equal to the square root of h bar divided by m omega. So now recall that in this problem, I want to find the probability that I will find the particle within these two regions over here, these two regions. So the probability is going to be equal to, so first of all, the integral from a to infinity of the wave function squared plus uh, the integral from negative infinity to negative a, so this part over here, of the wave function squared dx. So this is going to be the integral that we're going to have to evaluate. And then because of uh, the symmetrical nature of the quantum harmonic oscillator, these two integrals are actually going to be the same. So I can just ignore this, and then the integral at uh, the probability is just going to be 2 times this first integral, because both integrals are the same. So now our focus would be on to solve this, uh, to be, it would be on solving this integral over here. And observe that in this problem, we're dealing with the ground state of the harmonic oscillator. So the wave function is equal to xi naught, the function with only the x component, times the time component. And then if you take the conjugate and then uh, you multiply the wave function together, all you're going to get is xi naught squared dx. And the reason is because the conjugate cancels out this, uh, this term over here. So we can just ignore this. So all we have to do now is to solve this integral. And then recall, as we've solved previously, xi naught is just equal to m omega divided by pi h bar to the power of 1 fourth times e to the power of negative m omega 2 h bar x squared. So now I can just substitute this term inside this integral 
and then try to solve it explicitly. So squaring this, I'm just going to pull the constants out. So instead of power of 1 fourth, I get the power of 1 half, which is just equal to the square root. And then inside the integral, I get something like this. So because of the square, this 2 goes away. So this is what I'm going to get, dx. And then in order to simplify this a bit, I'm just going to go back to our convention of letting y be equal to m omega divided by h bar x. So I'm going to do a bit of substitution. So I'm going to do a bit of integration by substitution. So let's just copy out these constants first. So I'm going to figure out the bounds later. So first of all, the e term it becomes e to the power of negative y squared. And then doing the substitution, we know that dy dx is just equal to m omega divided by h bar. So dx is equal to h bar divided by m omega times dy. So I can just switch out dx for h bar divided by m omega times dy. And then you can see that these terms conveniently cancel out. And then for the bounds of the integral, we just substitute in infinity for x to get the upper bound. So when x is equal to infinity, y is also equal to infinity. And then when x is equal to a, y is going to be equal to, so I'm going to have to substitute this result in. So a is equal to h bar divided by m omega. So when x is equal to a, y is going to be equal to, as you can see here, the constants are going to cancel out perfectly. So when x is equal to a, y is going to be equal to 1. So this integral goes from 1 to infinity. So here you see that we have a rather nice integral. So at this point, you can't really solve this any further by hand. You're going to have to use a uh, you're going to have to use a look up the table for this integral over here, and then once you look up the value, you're going to get your result uh, to be equal to somewhere around 0 0.157.